My name is Andreas Platte. I'm a um, policy, uh, political scientist and I have a position for public policy at the University of Duisburg-Essen. My substantive research interest is in migration and integration policy and at first sight everybody knows what we're talking about but uh, actually particular integration is something very fuzzy. It's related to many many issues such as labor market developments, housing, language acquisition, the media and whatever you think of. And Then I had a meeting with corpus linguists and they said fun starts when you have 100 millions of words or more and I thought like okay this is the approach that would be really useful for me because I have a, a, a hugely dispersed issue and I'm interested in how it evolved over time so I started to program and to establish a database for myself and to, to, to see how the issue developed and fed itself through the political systems that's how I became a a political data scientist. A few years ago I established the Paul Mine project without having funding but funding but the idea was that we need the data and the tools in political science or social science uh, to query large corpora and to work effectively with large corpora. So we developed a corpus of plenary debates in the German Bundestag at first and proceeded to establishing a corpus for the regional parliaments and then when I had this the data ready I discovered I couldn't work with it because it's large data. Um, more than a hundred, hundred million words and more. Uh, so I started to work on a, an environment to, to analyze these data. It's a package, an R package called Paul Mine R. It's available for everybody, just like the data. Uh, and that's what I use to, to see how issues, political issues uh, develop. Uh, I do time series analysis. Uh, and I do have findings such as that there's a very limited impact of the establishment of migration ministries or integration ministries on what I call the attention structure. So this is uh, the political science work I do, uh, but I'm also a political data scientist, as I said, and I hope to contribute uh, to mm. incremental progress in uh, our scientific endeavor. So there's a set of data I offer and um, tools for analyzing these data. Uh, for the benefit of everybody who uh, uh, has the courage uh, and the scientific uh, curiosity uh, to work with large textual data. Science is a matter of curiosity, uh, but for some research matters you have very good maps. Uh, so if you do survey research, you have uh, survey data that is available, you can download it, uh, use some established uh, software, uh, and then follow a very well-defined uh, track. That is, you have established theories, you derive hypotheses, you uh, operationalize your, uh, your, your measurements, and then you test your, your hypotheses. The research process is somewhat different, uh, as I see it, when you work with large textual data. Because as a first step, you will usually have to inquire the data. So there's a, a, an exploratory step that is really important as a first step. What I do actually have in the data, how can I get in first insight into the structure of, of the data. So exploratory uh, techniques are more important for those dealing with big data, with big textual data. But then we should get back to some established practices. Uh, it's questions about what are my concepts, how do I operationalize my concepts, how do I validate the results that I have. I think these issues remain important for those social scientists who consider some th themselves computational social, social scientists. So we need to get back to rigorous research, but being much more curious and adventurous at the outset.